Hello, welcome to episode three of Midwest Fish Finder. We have a great show lined up for you. We're going to talk musky on the fly. And we have the fly, the musky on the fly ninja, Dustin Hines, on the show tonight. And I've been blessed to fish with him several times, and there, I don't know what it is. I've cast side by side with him, and there's something he does to get those muskies to follow. So, Dustin, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me up here. Uh, so, how did you get just your fly fishing start? All right. So back in back in 2001, I joined the uh, joined the Marine Corps at the age of 24 years old, and uh, it was just something I wanted to do, and, and finally jumped the gun and did it. And I uh, I found myself stationed on the uh, East Coast uh, out in Washington D.C. I'd been a fisherman, a gear fisherman, though my entire life. But um, once I got out there, uh, we had the mountains right there, and there's a lot of trout to be had. So I, I figured I'd take up a fly rod and go up and explore the trout. And uh, I thought, well, when I went back home after I got the Marine Corps, I could still take that, that fly rod home and explore some, uh, some warm water fishing opportunities around uh, the central Illinois area. So uh, I've been doing it since about 2002, 2003, give or take, and uh, it's my passion. It's what I do. And it's really evident that uh, it's, it, you're very passionate about it. Um, and one of the great things is that you put me, um, you put other people ahead of you when you're fishing. We'll talk about that more in the show uh, as we talk about some of the techniques. I, uh, and you talked about trout, and there was something particular that you did on a particular float trip that reminded me of trout fishing. But how did you make the transition from, you know, just regular most people think fly fishing and we've talked about this on previous episodes they automatically think of trout that when you sure. fly fish it's just trout you yep. can't catch other species how did you make the jump from you know fishing for trout to musky gotcha so so back when uh when i moved back to illinois uh like i said i brought those fly rods back home with me and i explored some you know ponds for bluegill and, and crappie and, and different things like that and bass um, but one of the things I was, I was fortunate enough to do when I was out east was I had a buddy that lived up in Long Island. So uh, I'd go up there and chase uh, stripers and bluefish on the, uh, on the fly. And it was just a, a total adrenaline dump, man. When we got, when you got a hundred yards of schooling fish that are just busting on, on shad and bunker and that sort of thing, uh, it, was, it was just a rush to go in there and, and throw big flies and catch these just super powerful fish. So when I got back home, I I, I wanted I, I had that craving for that that adrenaline rush. So so that naturally I just went for the biggest you know apex predator I could find, and, and uh, you know I've got a little bucket list of different species that I wanted to catch, and, and you know I got stuck on musky. I, I I got my pike on the fly, I got my smallmouth on the fly, and then once I hit musky, I'm like, dude, this is this is where it's at right here. This is this is a rush when you when you get that boat side eat on that on that figure eight. It's just it's just an absolute adrenaline dump. So, how, how long have you uh, been fishing for musky on the fly? So, I started, I, uh, again, I had that bucket list. I wanted to go catch a musky on the fly. Uh, a local guide that I've heard of, uh, he, wasn't a, he wasn't a fly guy, but uh, he was a big musky guy and down-to-earth guy. I approached him. I said, listen, I want to... I want to catch a musky on the fly, and, and, and you know the musky, you know the fish. If you tell me where to where to cast and what color to cast, I said, I'll get the fly and, and, and put it in front of his face. Let's see if we can do it. And, uh, again, it, it, I was ruined from the get-go. So many people, I think, are ruined from the get-go because they have the instant success uh, with musky fishing, and, and they don't understand that there's just there's a grind to it, just absolute grind. But that, that first trip out, we went out. It was it was ice off musky. The, the lake had just, just thawed out, and it was open water. And uh, I was fortunate enough. I got I got three fish on my first trip out, and I, I've, I've been ruined ever since. So uh, that was back in 2005. So we're talking 2018. So rough, roughly 12 or 13 years, give or take. I've been chasing these chasing these darn fish. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And it's uh, when you talk about you know you ruined musky fishing on the fly is not for everybody. And I remember my first trip. John took me down and musky fishing and. He's like, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it yep. because it's a grind. So, but what I've no, and I've had a, just a, a little bit of luck, you know, fishing with you guys, and you guys have been great mentors, and and I've had caught a few musky on the fly. But what I've realized is, every time I go with you, that you're always it seems to be successful. I know there's days where you've had droughts and stuff, but there's something about. I just remember our last trip, and I'm casting right next to you, stripping. And you get three follows. I didn't see a fish the whole day. There's something you do in your routine 
that is apparently more attractive to the muskie. So what I, I think we should do for this show is is break that down, like tear down, you know, the fly casting, the, the cadence, and the, sure. the retrieve, and then um, the figure eight, and then what the flies you're using. So let, let's start with, you know, your, your retrieving uh, and how you go about, you know, attracting these musky. Let, let's back it up one one step there even further and let's let's uh, let's get before the retrieve and I'll, let's go into the cast and and, okay. that, and I think that cast is real critical and, and again uh, just casting to a fish is, is very important and, and you know the more and more I fish these bodies of water I'm, I'm learning where these fish are lying and, and you know while you might be in the back flailing around throwing casts out there I'm I'm trying to cast to you know strategic spots you know like I think a fish would sit right there you know, this last time we went out, it was it was super warm. We were looking for that, or su- super cold water, and I'm looking for that warmer water. I'm like, they're going to be sitting up and, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a dark, dark area. I'm looking for some place where they're going to sit, where they feel comfortable, and where they're warming up, and that sort of thing. So, just me casting to strategic spots, whether it's a little rocky outcrop or something like that, is, is you know, placing that fly, not just not just aimlessly casting and casting and casting. And then, and then going into the retrieve, you know, and, and like I said, each fly uh, presents itself into a different retrieve. Um, you know, I, I explained that, you know, I was moving fish one day on a double hand retrieve. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do when I got the fish on, but I knew that I casted this one piece of structure. I knew there was a fish in there, but I just couldn't get him to come out. And I, I, I ripped one by with a double hand retrieve and he, he blew up, he blew right out of there. And, I, and then I, I was able to move him several times, but he never would, never would hit, but he wanted that super fast pre- presentation other times it's a it's a strip strip pause it's strip strip pause and and uh, making that fly just walk the dog most i would say 98 percent of the flies that i fish uh probably a fault of my own are that walk the dog style i want that I want that back and forth action all the way back to the boat and you know every time I sit down at the vise I'm just trying to perfect that tie to get that fly to walk on every single strip so when I'm stripping it in I'm, I'm watching that fly and seeing how it's reacting to each one of my pulls each one of my strips and if it's walking on a on a strip strip hard strip 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 hard strip and when I'm saying I'm, I'm it's a strip strip hard strip you know I was kind of showing you the last time that I came out uh, so I make a, I make a real hard strip and it gets it to walk to the walk to the left or walk to the right and then I'm throwing two micro strips in there and all that's doing is not moving the fly at all all it's doing is getting that big boa slack in and then once I'm taught with the fly I give it a hard yank and it, it, it automatically just rips it back um, other flies you know I, I throw the Optimus Swine a lot and I love that fly it's got it incorporates that popper uh, it doesn't matter what you do if you just strip 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 it just walks the dog all the way back beautifully. And uh, just keeping that cadence up, you know, we, we were going into the figure eight and I was critiquing your casting, your retrieve, you know, as that fly is walking back to the, the, to the, uh, to the boat, I'm watching that fly. Not only am I watching that fly, I'm watching behind the fly. Um, I, I think I missed a lot of fish early on because I got so intrigued just watching the fly, just watching it work. And I wasn't looking behind, seeing that fish that might've been a foot, two, three, four feet even behind that fly and uh, maybe not going into that figure eight or keeping that cadence right. But anyways, I'm getting it back. If I see a fish behind it, I, I like to I like to speed it up. So if a fish is following it, um, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to be like the minnow and uh, that, that fleeing bait fish, like, oh crap, there's a predator behind me. And then I speed it up, you know, and get that fish excited. That way when it comes into the figure eight, it's ready to eat right then and there. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll cover the figure eight, but I'm going right in. I'm keeping that same cadence, whether it's a fast cadence or whether it's a slow cadence, whatever I think the fish wants that day, uh, going right into the figure eight and keeping that same presentation right into my L turn, right into my figure eight. And that's interesting. You say, you know, that you speed up at the, uh, when you see a fish and pike are so different cause you can actually just stop the fly right? and then the pike will come up and just maul it. So it's important what I am taking from everything you're teaching me is important to keep that fly moving because right. if you let it stall, then that muskie will probably lose interest, yeah. right? Yeah, if, if you stop that fly, um, now don't get me wrong, different bodies of water, different fish, every fish is different, just like yeah. we're different, they want a different presentation. Sometimes I've sped that fly up and they and they bolt it off because I sped it up. It doesn't work every time, I just, like I said, uh, I just try to keep what works, you know, consistent and just keep doing that. And if I, I you got to, you got to read the fish, you know, that the last body of water that we were on, you know, uh, prior to you coming out there, I went into a figure eight and those, those fish are super, 
super spooky because they just get pounded and pounded and pounded by gear guys and I went into my figure eight and they were seeing the boat seeing me whatever and they just bolt off immediately they weren't they weren't keyed into that fly and and so you got to read your water you got to read your fish know what that fish wants don't get me wrong again like I said I've, I've, I've known several gear guys that yeah like i bring that bait in i just kill it right next to the boat and as it's slowly falling they just crush it i'm like dude that's totally contrary to what i'm running into if as soon as i kill that fly as soon as i kill that motion they're gone man they lose interest and they just fade away so find find the ticket i wonder um you know with our last trip the reason you were getting them in the figure eight because we did have a little bit stained water right yeah, yeah so i wonder if that has anything to do with it you know or yeah it was I mean, choppy it's choppy yeah. oh yeah it, dude that, that's that's the hard thing with musky man he, he, one once you think you got them figured out man it, it just it changes you know it changes and, and like i said i just try to try to play the odds i'm a numbers guy I crunch the numbers like you know okay this worked the last three or four trips or this worked the last three or four retrieves i'm gonna keep doing this but you know you gotta you gotta you know with musky fishing man it's that definition of insanity you, you do right. the same thing over and over and you're gonna get the same results you know right good or bad right right so um now that you, you that's interesting about how you retrieve and then you say you go into your l turn so for people that are new, what is an L turn? All right. and yeah. So I'm bringing that I'm bringing that fly back to the boat. I'm watching that fly. I'm watching behind the behind the fly and that sort of thing. And uh, regardless whether I see a fish or not, uh, it's critical. Like if you're if you're not devoted, you're not you're not you're not going to do it every single time. You're not going to go into that eight every single time. At least do yourself the the, the favor of, of going into an L turn. And what I mean by an L turn is. You're bringing that fly back in. You're coming straight back to the boat. You're in line with it. You've got your you've got your rod right in line with the fly line. You're not coming in at an angle. It's coming straight back. And I'm gonna come. I'm gonna bring that fly within a foot and a half to two feet of my rod tip. You, know, you got to bring it in close. You can't have too much slack in when you're doing that figure eight. I get that fly right up into the. You know, I'm pulling my tippet or my. I'm pulling that leader up into my my uh, my rod guide, and then I'm coming straight in towards the boat or towards the shore. If you're wade fishing, we, we catch a lot of fish wading. You can do the same thing. It's not impossible to do a figure eight uh, from the bank, but you gotta be in waders and you gotta be standing in enough water to have that fish work. Anyways, I've, I've already got that rod tip in the water. I'm bringing it straight back and I'm shooting straight out. And I come straight in and I shoot straight to my right. I don't go to the left, I go to the right. And the reason I'm going to the right is because a lot of times that, that change of direction, the change of direction is what keys that fish in. That's why the, the figure eight is so deadly on these fish is because that bait fish is swimming straight away from them and all of a sudden it turns hard and when it turns hard it's showing that profile it's showing the side and that's the way that fish wants to eat that 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 prey is is come from the side and just t-bone that thing so when i when i turn it when i make that l turn i catch a lot of fish right on that l turn i come straight in i kick it out to the right and again the reason i'm kicking it out to the right is it, and it's a comfort thing with me for for setting that hook okay so when i come and i make that and when i punch my punch my rod down and punch it to the right and then i'm bringing it up i'm going into that first turn of my figure eight that's where your your most active fish are going to hit they're going to hit it right there and when they do they're coming up from behind it they've come straight at you they've made the left turn you're making a right turn obviously as you're looking at it and they crunch it so that fish is going away from you when it's hitting it and what i'm doing it, it's it's not the greatest but it, what i'm doing is i'm driving that rod back into the fish and again I'm rolling my arm to make that rod and that reel turn like this so I use the action of the rod and, and I'm setting the hook back into the fish okay and at that point in time I'm hoping that fish just keeps on that straight path and then I'm going to give it a good good hard strip set if strip set is critical we'll cover that a little bit you know as well but you got a strip set on these fish these fish have got such hard mouths and it presents the best opportunity to hook that fish and like I said if I come in and go to the go to the left you know, I don't have the same, I don't feel as though I have the same power coming to the right, but you, you adapt it, man. If you, if you think you've got a better, better sweep back, I like, I like the over across my body this way, and it's just a comfortable motion. And uh, the more you do it, the, you'll, you'll see that it works. You know, it, it's critical. At least do that L turn. Do yourself a favor. If you're not going to go through the whole figure eight, do that L turn and bring it around. And once you see a couple fish come up and crush it, a couple fish come up and, 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 and follow it through the figure eight, the fig, you, you'll be a believer in that, that technique. So if, if you don't get them on the, uh, the L turn, yep. and then now, one thing I noticed and, and you explained to me is you were changing depths. So explain like on the L turn how deep you are and you've got your rod tip in the water, then you come up and 
around in the figure eight. Kind of explain, walk through the figure eight. Sure, sure. Okay, so when I'm bringing it in, I, I, I like to keep my rod tip in the water. I feel as though I've got the best contact with my fly. I don't like that rod tip above the water and that line flipping everywhere and flipping mist and everything like that. I don't feel as though I get the best action of my fly. So I've already got that rod tip in the water, sometimes a foot, sometimes a foot and a half as I'm stripping that fly back. When I go into that L turn, I'm, I'm plunging that rod, not, not a hard plunge, but I'm plunging that rod a little bit deeper and I'm going into that L turn. When I'm going into that L turn, it's a natural, comfortable feeling to kind of come up a little bit anyways, rather than keeping that rod plunged down. I'm coming up and I'm bringing that fly shallow and on the first turn and as I'm going back around when I'm starting to create that eight I'm plunging that that fly back down deep again and uh, early on I had some some moderate success on eights uh, hook and fish and that sort of thing but a lot of them lost interest and I think of the reason it was because I was working that fly I was going through the motions I was doing my figure eights and that fish was following it but you know that fly might only been an inch or two or even three inches underneath the water when I was going through my eights and I didn't get as many eats and what I what I've done these last few years is I've, I've started working those eights deep and so when I'm coming around on that eight I'm plunging that rod down sometimes three four five feet and I, I at that point in time I can't even see the fly because it's down there so deep and then on my turn I'm bringing that fly back up shallow on the turn you know on the first the second turn of the eight and then I'm plunging back deep so I'm getting that fish to change depths change styles and, and, and just chase that fly get them get them active I'll sometimes twitch my rod to get that rod to start cutting through the water to, to create some air bubbles and, and just that that sheer panic you know but uh, it's real critical to keep that same speed going through your eight don't don't leave too much slack going in and, and I've found that my hookup success and my eats on my eight has gone up drastically since I've started putting that rod tip. That one day that you and I were out there in the boat when I got that one on the eight, I couldn't see the fish, couldn't see the bait, nothing, but I had I had it buried all the way almost to the cork. Uh, I mean, you're talking, it was it was down there at six, seven foot, and that fish felt comfortable, I think, down that deeper water, just go ahead and eat that fly. And uh, I never felt the fish or anything like that. Again, it was that, that sixth sense we've talked about. You know, I just, I, I was like, he's got to have it. And I just counterstruck, and, and he was there. You right, know, he right. was there. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's super interesting, because I remember um, the, my first time, I've never ever had one chase the eight. Yeah. I've always caught mine doing sure. goofy stuff like swinging. Yeah. But it's so the leisurely lift, man. Right, right. right. Who who would ever thought the leisurely lift would work on a uh a low I didn't know is that even the right word yeah, the, for, for the, the lysing ring lift yeah. technique. Yeah, you, you, you again you pulled something out and it worked that day. Right. It triggered and, those fish. But when when you remember we were scouting you had that uh you were throwing gear for a second because we yeah. weren't moving anything at yeah. all. And the same thing, you got it, you go, oh, there's a fish, and dude, I almost, you know, I was all excited because I'd never seen one up that close, you know. And the next thing I know, I said, boom, fish on, and, and you hit the, you couldn't see the gear, you couldn't see the lure, um, and it, it was that success thing again. You've you've created this um, instinct because you do the same thing, and it's very interesting. I mean, it's very interesting to watch you fish, how methodical you are with it. Um, and it's very, because you, your success rate is just amazing. It's just amazing to see. Now, with, um, after the figure eight, you, and um, how long do you figure eight? It, I mean, you keep them going. If they dart off, do you quit figure eighting, or could they come back? Again, it's just reading that fish, you know, and, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never had one come back. I've never had one zip off and and, uh, and, and then come back, but I, I'll still give that fish the benefit of the doubt. Uh, when you're only seeing, you know, one, maybe two, uh, maybe three fish a day, hey, that was an active feeder. He wanted to eat. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to run that fly and that figure eight until either I'm, I'm satisfied or I just don't think that fish is going to come back. And I might make my sweeps a little bit bigger. I may go, you know, real big and wide on my, my turns. But, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run that thing. Um, actually, this this past winter, this past December, it was the first time I've ever given up on a on a fish. I've never given up on a fish, but I was just so frustrated with it. Um, I was going through my eight, going through my eight, and he just kept following. I kept following. I did everything I could. I plunged deep. I came shallow. I went fast. I went slow. And he just never left that fly. And I literally, you know, I was figure eighting for the better part of a minute and a half, two minutes, and my arm was shot. And I just, you know, I stopped, you know, and I was just like, I'm done. I, I, I can't do this anymore. My arm shot. And he'd veer off a little bit, and I'd go right back into my figure eight, and he'd pop right back over. And uh, after, like, five minutes messing with this fish, I said, I'm done with you. You know, I, I stroked the canoe. You won. Away from him. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you won this round, man. Right. 
Uh, right. But I've never left a fish. That's the first fish that I've ever stopped on, you know. So um, there was an instance, you know, I went on a trip with you guys. We all went on a trip together. And so we're downstream. John and I are downstream fishing. And all of a sudden I see you and Chris move upstream. So tell us about some of the trout instincts that sure. you use. And, because people don't think, okay, you know, you can use some trout you, skills you learn trout fishing to apply that to musky and kind of you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely, that. I know so exactly. Walk where you're, through, yeah, yeah, I know where you're going with this. And, and uh, like I said, I cut my teeth on trout. Did a lot of research, studied. I, I read a tremendous amount. I, I, I study these things. And uh, like I said, we we had this conversation today. I would much much rather fish for a river muskie or a river fish in general than a lake fish. You know, lake fish tend to get bigger. I know that that sort of thing. But I'm more comfortable on smaller rivers, smaller bodies of water uh, because I know how to read the water. If you can read it, if you can read a trout, if you can read a smallmouth on where they're lying, you can catch muskie. And 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 what I did was, you know, we weren't moving any fish. We were down in a deep pool, and we just we weren't moving fish. We knew there was fish in the area. Yeah, but we weren't moving them and, and what I did was I kind of reverted to that trout technique and I'm like okay where's where's that trout gonna lie where's that where's that active feeder gonna lie and he's gonna lie in the head of that pool so I'm thinking okay we're down here in six eight feet of water there's a foot and a half to two feet of water up here real shallow riffle basically those active feeders those active musky are going to push up and they're going to be sitting right there because that's the best feeding lie in the river and uh you know they're going to get the the first dibs on any any dead shad that's floating down the river or any little bait fish that's that's screwed up or whatever and we moved up there and i said hey chris let's 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 sneak up here and and you know hey we're all buddies but right hey, we were we were moving fish up there we just kind of kept it quiet i said hey keep it quiet right i said well, you see a fish you know you yeah, keep it you quiet know. Oh, yeah, we were, we <laughs> you were, know everybody's going to tailgate. We were we were we were being <laughs> stealth, stealthy, and, and you know, and, and, and you know, like the second or third cast he threw into that shallow water, boom, there he was, and he followed in. And, and again, this is where I go back to the figure eight. You have to when when you, you body placement in a boat, body placement in the and in, 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 in strategic placement in the stream when you're wading, you have to do that because that fish came in hot after Chris fly. He was going to eat. It was going to eat, and he goes to do, go into the figure eight, and and he's standing in, in a foot of water, and, and right. that fish just wasn't going to come up in a six inches of water and, and follow that fly to the figure eight right. and uh he'd have had that fish on the second cast um and then we proceeded to move it out of that cover a couple different times but that was a real eye opener for me it's like get out there put yourself in the best spot so if you if you've got a figure eight if you've got a hot fish following it in that you can plunge that rod down and and, and work that fish right next to you because if you're standing in six inches of water you you he, he's gonna he's not gonna eat you know he, he just i mean i'm not saying he's not but yeah. you're not gonna be able to effectively work that fly that's what happened in the boat with us we had the boat in a foot of water and i'm trying to figure eight in a foot of water and that fish just came in and just blew up on that fly just right. mud and crap and bubbles and everything like that i can't hardly work the fly because it's in such shallow water you know right. so right. I said body positioning, you know, turn and yourself. That that happened to Chris twice on that trip. It did. You know, farther down, you yeah. know, he, he was, in, we were in shallow. And sometimes, you know, there, you're limited by, you know, the river, the sure, contours sure. of the river. But same thing, you know, and I thought for sure he was on, I mean, he did everything perfect. But what are you going to do when you're in a foot of water? That was, um, that's the other thing too, you know, it, it, back to the figure eight, you know. Um, whether it's military trainer or whatever, just doing this long enough, man, I like I'm super cool. Like I just super calm when I'm bringing that fish in. I'm like, yep, there's a fish. I go right into my figure eight, and you know I'm working that fly and I'm working that fish, and I'm staying calm. And as soon as that fish does what it needs to do, I do what I need to do and and, and go into action and get that hook set. But it's just the opposite with him. You know, yeah. we we totally ruined him on that trip because yeah. there was four of us standing up on the shoreline. And we're like. Yeah. Go to the eight. Go to the eight. I'm, I'm just so excited. I'm just I, yeah. I screwed him up because he couldn't focus. And when that right. fish ate, he yeah. he screwed up the hook set because we're just screaming at I him. Mean, I swore he did everything perfect. Uh, yeah. I thought he did the perfect oh, he did. strip set. Yeah, he hit him. You know, um, it just sometimes that's how it goes it with, is. with that type of fishing. And it, it's funny you say um, like me when that boat uh, when the well when we were on our last uh, trip on the river um, and we we're in the canoe. And you get that fish on the eight, and I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Yeah. I'm all excited. You're freaking out. out. You're freaking out. I'm just like, I got the fish. I'm just like, I'm like, net the fish. I mean, about as calmly as you I mean, I got the hook fish. It's flopping both sides. And you're like, what do you want me to do? And I'm just like, 
net the fish, man. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, I'm not, you know, this sounds like we're just telling stories, but right. what you can take from that is just stay calm, keep right. your cool, don't jack it up. You've done everything right up into this point, up into the strip, mm-hmm. up into the L turn. And when that fish eats, don't lose your cool and freak out. Right. Like I said, I'm freaking out over this guy. Catch- I'm not even the one catching the fish. I'm totally right. cool. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm stone cold when it's me. But, you know, just watching him, you know, get that fish. And do you think, you know, your stone cold um, uh, attitude or your um, the way you approach him, is that out of experience? You know, yeah. you've done so oh, God, much yes. of it. You know, oh, that, yeah. yeah that, that it's created. Believe like, me, when I first started this, oh, totally freaking out. Totally. Fish, fish. Because, right. you know, it's like, holy cow, when you've only seen, you've been fishing for six, eight hours, all of a sudden there's a fish behind your fly. You're just, you just, either do one of two things, you know, early on, you either completely freak out or you stop the fly. Yeah. Deadly. Just yeah. absolutely lethal to your retrieve. You're like, oh, there's a fish. And you stop retrieving. You're like, and then he fades away. You're like, oh my gosh, that was it. You know? Or this last trip where we casted the entire day. And that last tiger, he, you know, it's at yeah. the end of the day, I'm smoked. I'm tired. And uh, that fish just came out of nowhere and, and just nothing water and just inhaled that fly. I never even saw him. And I just sit there. I'm like, and I didn't do anything. I, I freaked out. I'm just like, oh, tiger. I'm like, set the hook. Yeah. You know? I just like set the hook. And I, I totally, I mean, he, he literally came up. Fly was gone. This fly right here, gone out of his, you know, completely in his mouth. And I just sat there, and, and I was, I was smoked. We, we, we'd been on the water for nine hours. And yeah. I was just smoked. Um, and that's interesting. And, and um, I mean, all I've been lucky, very, very lucky in my outings because I, I've actually caught him on swing. I've never had to mess him up. And John's like, I can't wait till you mess him because you're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to, it's going to be right by your feet, and you're going to trout set yeah yeah. but i've been real lucky because when you're swinging they just for some reason you don't i don't know if they grab it on the swing and they turn and it almost sets the hook sure automatically i can get away with my little trout set um so i've never had the chance to really mess it up i know it's coming in my future but right now i'm on just a complete drought but um so I can't. I, I couldn't imagine with the fish right by your feet, eating right by your feet. What I'm going to do? I'm probably going to scream like a girl. Well, naturally, naturally, the first couple times you do, we yeah. all do. So, but um, let's let's talk about the flies. I mean, the flies I use are not so big. Hold on, man. Let's let's not... back that up. Let's back that up before we get into the flies because you brought up a critical point. That's okay. That, it's that strip set. Okay. Let, I I want right. to I want to I want to make that clear as day. That's got to be a strip set, and, and you know maybe you guys don't know what a trout set is, but a trout set is, is just that that lifting of the rod, and that's just absolutely detrimental to a hook set on any muskie. And I, it, believe me, I watch all these videos. I've watched every single YouTube video out there. You know, some guys are successful with it, but you know, time and time and time again, you will fail if you trout set. You've got a strip set, and what I mean by that strip set, and you've got it just anchored into your head all day long, is is as you're retrieving that fly, your 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 rod's pointed, you know, straight at that fish. And uh, or straight at that fly, and as you're stripping and you're making those strips, you're making those strips. And when he eats, you know, again, this is where you got to keep your cool. As soon as he eats, you know, if you can wait, if you can just, you know, have that intestinal fortitude to wait for that fish to turn just for a second. That fish fought hard. He, he swam hard. He opened his mouth and he ate that that fly. He worked for that piece of bait. He's not going to let it go. He's not going to just open his mouth and just let that fly go. If you can wait for that fish just a, just a half quarter second to turn, and then you're just going to strip just like you're stripping the fly in, but you're going to give it a lot more help. You're going to point that rod straight at that fish. You're going to punch your rod out, and you're going to drop that left. If you're right-handed, you're going to drop that left arm, and you're just going to drive that in. And uh, if you don't believe me, you know, go out there and, and lift lift the rod up and see how much pressure. Put a scale on the end of your rod and have somebody read the scale. And just go ahead and pop your rod up like you would a trout set. Even you, even a strip set. Strip down, pull up like that, like you're doing a double haul, and see how much pressure you're putting on that fish. Now, or, or put how much poundage of pressure you're putting on it. Now, point that, point it right at that scale, and then just pull straight back hard, and and you're going to see those numbers just jump, jump drastically. And that's what it takes. That's what it takes to get that hook driven through that maw of that fish, driven home, and that's what's going to keep you button. Yeah, you can you can trout set and you can get away with it for a while, but eventually you're going to start losing fish. Right, so. and I think, like I said, is lucky because I've caught them. You know, on the swing, way away from sure, me. Sure, sure. And when, when you like at the end of a swing, and it, that fly jitters. I mean, they just come. Ma- I, I feel them like it's like when I caught those fish. Uh, it was like I don't know. It just felt like some a tank hit the end of my line. So like they pretty much set the hook. I'm sure. pretty much lucky that you know. 
Uh, and I, I can't wait to get. I've never had one on the eight. It's gonna so happen, man. It's gonna I know. happen. So I just Much gotta get down with, with you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially now that um, I'm in, you know, hooked up with you guys. I, I definitely can't wait for that. So strip set, very important. Um, what about flies? I mean, the yeah. flies I've been using seem to be like little baby sure, flies compared sure. to the giant you know, flies. Guy, guy put up something the other day about you know little flies catching catching big fish. You know, and I, I knew I could just you know I, I did a quick Facebook stalk of this guy, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I know exactly where this guy's fishing. He's fishing for high pressured fish. Those fish have seen every single giant musky lure ripped by their ripped by their face. Um, they're not going to come out and, and hit a giant bait. You know, they're less likely to. So something mm-hmm. little. That's just zipping through the stream, yeah, or zipping through that body of water is yeah. probably the ticket for those fish. So yeah, um, you don't have to throw, you know, you don't have to throw a, you know, a fourteen or fifteen inch fly. Notice right. my colors, my yellow. That's that's right. my go-to. You don't have to throw a fifteen inch fly to get these fish to hit. But you got again, it's going back to knowing that fish and knowing what the, you know, how a musky acts. And that musky wants to come out. He wants to eat a big meal. He wants to swallow that thing whole. Go back down to that pool, not at the head of the pool. Go back down that eight foot of water and just sit on the bottom and digest that meal. Yeah. So, so again, different times of year dictate different flies. So right now we're fishing for ice off muskie, and uh, that water's really cold and in you know, springtime. So springtime that bait fish is a little bit smaller. So and and they're not looking for that great big meal. They're they're going to eat something small. So you can get away with. Uh, you can get away with something pretty small, you know. Uh, that that one day I went out, that first day that I had my three fish day, I was using a using a fly kind of kind of like that right there. You know, we're looking at you know about a six inch long fly, maybe right. maybe even a five inch fly. That's all I was throwing that little guy. And now I look at it, you know, and, and this this is where I started. At. I had a three fish day on this fly here, and now look what I'm throwing. You know, I'm throwing big stuff. You know, right. and I'm not saying you got to throw the big stuff, uh, but. Uh, I seem to have you know good consistency, especially in the fall. That that fall time, that's right. big. That's big bait time. Spring is, time. Is, I mean, do musky? You mentioned the fall. Do they? They kind of pack on food for They're the winter. Packing too? it on, packing it on for the winter, man. If if you can only fish for musky a certain time of year, fall is the ticket, man. And, and and you know, case in point, you know, I got I got the horseshoe. I've been holding the horseshoe for a while now. Yeah. Uh, you know, out of the last six trips, I've I've, I've averaged ten fish in the last six trips. Um, but you know. It, my favorite, favorite, favorite time to fish is in the fall because the right. success rate is up so high. If I could fish September, October, November, that's money right there. That's money. Right. Um, so as far as, you know, we've talked, kind of walked through it, and this is just kind of an introduction to fly fishing. I, I'd love to have you back yeah. many, many more times. Absolutely. Just an amazing uh, amount of knowledge you have. And just, I don't know what it is. There's something about you just a fishy type of person. Yeah. But, I mean, let's just talk a little bit about some gear. You know, okay. I'm throwing an eight weight. And, yeah, you're and insane. You're like, it's just, and it's, you're it kills me. me. It kills but, me. So just run through some of your gear for us. Yeah. And so we can... we. If some uh, of the listeners are interested to get sure. started, yeah, you know, something they can look at. You know, let's 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 go ahead and start off with the rod. You know, I again back back to that 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 first time out. You know, the first few times out, I was throwing what I had. I fished salt, so uh, you know, I was throwing an eight and a nine weight, um, and that that worked. I caught fish on my eight weight. I caught fish on my nine weight, and then uh, I bumped up to a ten, and I bumped up to eleven, and now I want a twelve. I want a twelve, and again, you you, you know, guys say, oh, you, you can't set the hook with an eight weight. Has nothing to do with it because if you're strip setting, if you're if you're doing it right, yes, you can get a strip set with that. You you can set the hook with an eight weight. There's no question about it. But I watch you flail and flail and flail. He, you work so hard to throw those bigger flies on that eight weight, and 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 we're again. You go back to you know why am I successful? Why you not? I'm not working as hard. Uh, I'm not working as hard. It's contrary to what you might think. I'm not working as hard to throw those big flies with that ten weight because that line is and, and, and the power of that rod is throwing those out with as little effort as possible. So that's why I'm fishing these tens and elevens is because I can throw these bigger flies out. So so rod, yeah, I'm fishing a ten, I'm fishing an eleven. I don't think it, you know you need to go to a twelve, but if you're if you're just starting out, if you're just getting into this, and all you've ever thrown is a six, seven, maybe an eight weight, definitely definitely look into a ten weight. It's my workhorse, man. I yeah. use my ten weight. It's my workhorse. Uh, that's why I throw the bulk of my musky flies. Um, and then in the fall when I'm throwing those bigger flies, yeah, I'll throw that eleven weight reels. I am not hung up on reels at all. I, I literally have $350, $400 fly rods with $40 cheap reels on right. it because I firmly believe that, uh, well, 
at every single muskie I've ever caught, I've never put one on the reel. I do not put any fish on the reel. I've got 30, you know, if that fish, you know, I'm throwing out 60 feet or, or 50 foot cast, I've got 50 feet of line on the deck in front of me. And, and the minute I take my eye off the fish, once that hook, that fish is hooked, and I start tapping that reel and, and, and trying to reel all that line in, that's when I lose the fish. Right. I am 100% focused on that fish. Once that fish is on there, I'm 100% focused on it. Right. Salt, absolutely critical. you got to have that good drag. you got to have, you know, you're going to be down in your backing. But reels, I don't waste my money on it. What right. I'm looking at is a balance. So your reel on your rod needs to balance your rod. It's got to be the right weight. Again, taking that strain off your shoulder, yeah. making those casts easier. Um, after that, moving into lines. Again, I talk about my 10 weight being my workhorse, my workhorse line intermediate, just given the, the bodies of water that I fish, they're shallow, they're, you know, I'm working a weed edge, I'm working a, you know, a river that the deepest part is, is maybe eight foot, you know, yeah. so those fish are always looking up, they're a predator, they got the eyes on the top of the head, they're sitting in structure, they're looking up, they're looking at the bottom of that fly a lot of times, if I can get my fly down, that intermediate line, if I can get that fly down a foot, two foot, that's all I need, even an eight foot of water, that flies riding, you know, two, three feet above his head he's going to eat it so i i throw an intermediate line i'm throwing a 10 weight line on a 10 weight rod um i i've got a floating line i just got it i've literally used it like two or three times i can't stand throwing a floating line for musky it works that fly too shallow a lot of these right. you know need a line and then i've got my 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 sinking line so you know i'm, I'm throwing just to throw some names out there not endorsed by anybody right. uh, i'm throwing the real pike musky it's a love-hate relationship with that line still yeah. working some kinks out we're gonna get the you know reels gonna get through this you know and, and and they're 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 developing we've had some issues with it if you guys been in the industry a little bit you know what I'm talking about uh, and then SA after that I'm throwing a lot of scientific angler lines they got it going again uh, intermediate and then uh, if you're only gonna buy one line intermediate line if you're if you're fishing a lot of lakes and you're fishing some deep water or some faster deeper rivers then uh, I really like this uh, this triple density by SA the Sonar Titan is just just phenomenal line. Um, and, and do yourself a favor, spend your money on the rod, spend yeah. your money on the line, save up on the reel, man. Right. Just just save your money on the reel. Right, that's the same thing, you know, John always told me with smallmouth is the, the reel just holds your line. You're not yeah. going to put a smallmouth on, on, on the reel. And I do sometimes just for practice. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. But um, as far as, you know, the gear, I, you know, I use that, um, that I have, you know, because I'm a Reddington guy. Oh, yeah. You know? So... The Predator, you know, I have a 10-weight Predator. I never use it. It just sits over there. Actually, the, the one time I use it. You've I got have, a 10-weight Predator? Sitting right there. Dude. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I got I to send it back because remember I said that on, um, I said it on that fish and I, the, uh, I didn't have the ferrule. I didn't That's right. Ferrules, That's right. And I okay. cracked the ferrule. Okay. Line, but yeah, I get got, that I thing just, sent back, man. I know. I mean, yeah. I've just been sitting there. Solid rod. Solid rod. Right. That predator right. solid rod, man. That's. And then I just use the behemoth, you yeah. know, 7 8. Absolutely. Bohemoth yeah. all the way. Yeah. And then critical what he just said there 7 8. Those bohemoths are just that. They're huge. Mm-hmm. Had a 9 10 on my 11 weight. Huge reel. Hey, there's some guys out there that are, are gung ho and they, they like those bigger reels, but hey, I don't like the weight of that thing, right. you know. So seven eight, again, uh, totally, you know, it's it's. I'm not gonna say it's a bulletproof reel, um, but it's it's a solid solid reel. And right. if I ever go to the salt, it's got plenty of drag power to, to handle any fish in the salt. Right. And I mean, we did just on a side note. Yeah. I know you fish for carp. I mean, oh yeah. You, I mean, so those reels, in my opinion, would be just fine. Primo. For carp. Yeah. Primo. You know. Yeah. Um, that's that's literally my next reel is gonna be a. Uh, a six seven or something like that, and a bohemoth for yeah. my for my seven weight bice that I just yeah. picked up. Nice, so, nice, yeah. All right, so before we end the show, because we've been talking, let's talk. Let's talk real quick about leaders, okay? Real Good quick idea. about leaders. Yep. Real quick we leaders. Do that. Let's finish it out. We've got the yep. reel. We've got the rod. We've got the line. Now let's go to the leader. Leader, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. You made the comment when we went out, and I, I had to kind of check myself a little bit because I was running. I was literally running. Uh, a, a two and a half foot leader. I mean, just uh, and and that's it. That's all I was running was a two and a half foot leader. Like, God dang, your leaders are short. And I said, yeah. yeah, you know. And then I checked myself and I, I lengthened up my leaders a little bit. So don't overcomplicate it. Um, if you're a wire guy, fish wire. If you're a floral guy, fish floral. Um, I was a wire guy for years and years and years. This last year, I started experimenting with floral, so I'm running floral. I'm literally running a three foot section of straight fluorocarbon. Right, right to and again if you're a snap guy run snaps if you're a if you're a if you're a knot guy runs run knots um but yeah I'm, I'm running basically my setup is three foot and 
don't don't judge me on this. Three foot, and it might be why I'm catching fish and why he's not. Just yeah, saying. Yeah, I'm well. running. I'm I'm running three feet of fifty pound fluorocarbon. That's it. Right to a stay lock, and I, I stress stay lock because I love these snaps. They don't fail. Um, I love these snaps, and I change flies. I'm a fly tire, so I'm changing flies all the time. So I'm not a knot guy. I like to change my flies, um, and the snaps are the way I do it. Um, like I said, maybe not the best thing to start out with. We're catching a lot of small fish. Biggest fish we've caught out of these bodies of water has been about a 44. I've caught enough muskie. I know it's going to happen. I know I'm going to lose a fish, but I get good action with my fluorocarbon with my fly, and I, I, I really and truly think that I'm, I'm catching more fish because I'm running fluorocarbon. Yeah. I'm going to lose a fish. I'm purely okay with that, you know, right. and, and I'm, I just hope that if I lose a fish, you know, it shakes that fly out and, and lives a happy fishy life. But uh, yeah, wired up. If you want to wire, I'm just doing a loop to loop connection. When I was running wire, I'd run about a two and a half, three foot section of fluorocarbon, uh, roughly about 30 pounds. And then I'm going right into about a, about a 15, 12 to 15 inch uh, wire. Again, with that snap, doing a loop to loop connection, two perfection loops in the end, looping them together and you're in, you're in business. You pick your wire. If you want some, if you want some ideas on wire, Right in, ask yeah. Josh. We'll, yeah. we'll give you some pointers on wire to use. Yeah, right on. I mean, Rio makes a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rio. That's what I was using. Solid. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, before before we end the show, I mean, that, thanks for bringing up the, yeah. the leaders too. But before we end the show, I just want to you know give um good, we're going to do this tournament. I want you to talk a little bit about the tournament, the musky tournament, just so we can give them a plug down sure, there. Sure, sure. And yeah. hopefully we can run in, run into some people down there yeah, again. Yeah. Just look us up. Look us up, dude. This is, this is our yeah. passion. This is what we do. So, so. T- talk about uh, the tournament coming so, up. So this year, uh, fishing my very first musky fly tournament. Uh, we're going down to Tennessee, uh, McVinville. Uh, it's been going on for a few years now. It's put on by Towie Boats. It's called uh, Hardly Strictly Musky. Super pumped about it. Heard a lot about it. Watched it year after year. I've been watching this thing. Uh, the popularity of it, the, the, all the fun the guys are having. I was like, man, I want to be a part of that. You know, I'm not going down to win it. I, I, I got no intentions of, of winning this thing. Hey, if, if we catch some fish, all the better to it. You know, but I want to go down there just to be immersed. Uh, with with people of, of like minded sick minded people that are chasing these fish and just just talk with these guys and, and get out and fish a different body of water. I get stagnant on these bodies of water, so yeah, we're gonna, you know me, you, and Chris, we're gonna run down uh, marathon trip down to Tennessee. It's gonna be like a nine hour drive, but this hardly strictly musky has had me intrigued for the last few years, and and this year we're making it happen. So I'm pumped. And what I'm pumped. what I'm stoked about the whole thing is. I think it's another opportunity to learn. I oh, mean, absolutely. To, even if we don't catch a single fish, yeah. we get to fish more water. And always uh, just being with a lot of people that are really focusing on musking, you're going to pick something up. Absolutely. You're going to you learn something. Yeah. There's no way you can go down there and not learn something. So yeah. super excited. And say, so, hey, Dustin, I really, really appreciate coming on the show. I, I learned so much from you in a short amount of time, the several times that I've been on. And I look forward to doing many, many more trips, and we'll definitely bring you back. Absolutely. Um, and we may do something maybe uh, after the tournament. We sure. Can, we can goof off and, and yeah. do another show, Absolutely. or at least some type of report. A little so, follow-up, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so uh, thanks for having the show. Um, I appreciate that. And thanks to you guys for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. As always, if you are interested, check out Midwest Fish finder.com we're gonna have episodes we got resources up there we we're tracking water temps and all that uh, if you're interested in a guided trip hop on midwestfishingadventures.com just fill out the form I'll get back to you in 24 hours uh, and till the next show the next guest is Mike Ohm from Dad and Lad Outdoors we're gonna be talking about getting the next generation interested in outdoors and fly fishing very important to me I got a six going to be seven year old son um, that is getting into it and this guy has got it dialed in with his son they're doing some really really cool stuff in the outdoors so don't miss the next show until then have a great night